hi everyone. It's Natalie. I'm sorry for the artificial voice, but English is not my native language. Not long after God called me, I repeatedly heard the words, Know your enemy or you will lose the battle. I was afraid of the devil at the time and didn't want anything to do with him at all. But the words kept repeating themselves. With a heavy heart I started an investigation. But I soon realized that this was a necessary task, because the devil and his demons are everywhere, it does not mean when people have received the Holy Spirit that they are spared. If Satan tried to tempt Jesus in the desert, we will certainly not escape his wiles. With a proposal. That is how he offers everything, by implanting words, thoughts or feelings into the human being. It is then up to us to accept or reject these things. He often works in the same way as the Father, so that it sometimes becomes difficult to recognize Him. He always brings a part of the truth mixed with a lie, so that lie and truth become big to distinguish. An example of His cunning is the division of the ecclesiastical institutes and the rapture date setters. They have all been led astray. But usually it involves more dark things that He offers, such as temptations on a material level, lust, a heavy feeling, bad and dark thoughts that just pop up out of nowhere, and many more dark elements that are easily distinguishable from God's input. In the Bible we see that psychological and physical discomfort is caused by the devil and his demons. But how often is it viewed this way? Aren't we tempted to go to the doctor thinking he will solve the problem? Until we later conclude that another physical discomfort is emerging. If we don't constantly ask for Father's protection, then we are easy prey for the devil's attacks. Which does not mean that we can go through life healthy and well without any discomfort. Look at Job. Sometimes there are certain reasons why Father allows such things, but they will always be for the benefit of the soul. The devil is cunning and will always find a way to try to disadvantage the children of God. If the child continuously resists his attacks, he will play his part by influencing the family members. Unrest, disbelief, quarrels and even divorce then become the main goal. We see that many people who are called by the Father often face difficult family situations. Because the devil does not have a physical body, he makes eager use of persons who consciously or unconsciously make themselves available to him. He is so crafty that most people do not even realize that they are being led by the enemy of their soul. He takes possession of their entire body, thinking, and doing. Some years ago, God's Spirit pointed to a man and said, This is the devil in person. Upon closer examination, I could not find anything abnormal at first sight about this man, despite Satan taking full possession of him. But this person could heal people with his hands, but did not know our Lord Jesus. I am sure this man was completely unaware that the devil was in him. The man thought he had developed these special powers himself. In this way you can see how cunning the adversary works. A complete disguise for the person and for the outside world, people who do not know our Lord Jesus are easy prey for his guile. There is also demonic possession that is easier to perceive. Just think of mental institutions that are full of people who are afflicted with all kinds of psychological ailments, such as depression, compulsive disorder, anxiety, schizophrenia, and so on. Medication can suppress these ailments, but this does not relieve this person of these dark souls, who are awakened again and again in the absence of medication. Several serious cases of demonic possession have been reported. The true story of Annalise Michel, for example, which was later made into a film with the title, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Here we can see how demons sicken or even destroy the victim's body as in the case of Annalise. Often the victim speaks in foreign languages or tongues, which they never learned. Here we see that not only God's spirit speaks in tongues, but also the devil. This is an important warning for the Pentecostal Church. Demons do not only possess people or animals, but also objects. This can range from haunted houses to the possession of dolls, amulets, statues, and so on. In 2018, on the basis of incoming exorcism requests, the Vatican confirmed that demonic possession has increased tremendously around the world, instituting an exorcism course for 250 priests from different countries. 
There are also those who consciously allow Satan into their lives and are guided by him, these are the ones who sold their souls for power and earthly good. Here it is not only about Satanists, but about glorious people, of great wealth and very famous. There are many famous persons who make no secret of selling their souls to the devil. In these high circles Satan plays his greatest asset, by such persons the whole world is in his power, because power is given to him. That's how the whole system has become his property, from governments to the medical field, the music, the film industry, the media, and so on. You can't think of anything he doesn't interfere with. The different religions are yet another great asset in favor of the adversary. He does not miss any opportunity to lead mankind astray and distract them from our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the only one who can bring salvation to the soul. He is the only mediator between God and man. God does not accept other persons or idols standing between him and mankind. Satan makes it appear that people are free to choose a religion, because according to him all religions can bring salvation. But we must realize that there can be only one truth among the countless lies. That only one religion can be the right one, and that all else will put people in a dark place the day they enter the afterlife because their prayers were directed to a non-existent god or idol that is only a fabrication of the adversary. The Occult Yet another great domain where people give the devil a lot of power. Tarot, Wicca, Ouija board, palm reading, seances, rituals, magic and so on are an open door to the spiritual world. People are attracted by the mysteries of this unseen world, and think they find an answer to their questions in this. But they do not realize that this world is not just good things, but is also occupied by demons and other dark entities, waiting for someone to open a door for them to sneak in. These doors cannot be closed afterwards, with the result that these entities linger around the people who were present during the event. Spaces where the occult is practiced are filled with souls living in darkness. Just being in such spaces is enough to take home a curse. Practitioners of the occult are led by entities that cannot enter God's kingdom, which means that they are not enlightened at all in order to bring the truth. Here too, lie and truth are always mixed. No human being possesses these special powers by himself, unless it is given to him from the realm of the dead. The devil is usually regarded as a mythological figure with horns and goat's legs. But this is not the state in which he offers himself to humanity. He will always present himself in disguise, in the form of a savior, an enlightened one, a man or woman of influence, a man of the world, even governments, the film industry, the music industry and various organizations he owns. He hides behind many names, leaving humanity to believe that he is non-existent so that he can carry out his plans without arousing suspicion. But on closer examination we can conclude that he cannot resist putting his signature behind all his works.